welcome to First English Lutheran Church. We're excited to have you. Today is December 12th. It is our third Sunday in Advent. A few announcements before we get started. First off, just a reminder to be calling the church office for poinsettia orders and for Christmas Eve service sign-up. Our Christmas Eve service this year will be for 4, 6, and 8 p.m. Uh, and so please call the church office, let them know that you'd like to attend and which service you'd like to attend. Also, a quick reminder that if you are stopping in at the church at any time, in the breezeway there, we'll be having the giving tree. Uh, and so that'll be available to pick a gift and, and uh, participate with that. Uh, another little activity we'll have out there is since we're not holding the bazaar, we'll be uh, having a little bit of a pop-up during this Christmas season. So please feel free, whenever you see that in the breezeway, to, uh, to purchase items for the, what would be normally the bazaar. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. With that, I'll invite you to take a deep breath, center your heart and your mind, and prepare yourself for worship. We gather in the name of God, the creator of light, Jesus, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit, the light who illumines our path. Amen. In this season of light, let us go before God and confess how our words and actions contribute to the darkness instead of adding to the light. God of love and light, we confess that we are not always the light bearers you desire us to be. We shine a spotlight on the transgressions of others while trying to keep our own sins hidden in the dark. We burn bridges by being impatient, opinionated, and judgmental. We inflame others by lashing out by anger. We go through our days enveloped in the gloom of fear and doubt. We let our witness become a smoldering ember until it dies out completely. Forgive us, Jesus, the everlasting life. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Teach us to walk as children of light, surrounded by your love, forgiveness, and healing. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. God is light, and, God, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as God in, is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all our sin. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 239, Hark the Glad Sound. And let's sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Oh 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being, the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who overhear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is a reading from Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. And on that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness, and he will renew you in his love. And he will exult over you with loud singing as on the day of a festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. 
and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. And at that time, I will bring you home. And at that time, when I gather you, I, for I will make you renowned and praised among all peoples of the earth. And I restore your fortunes before your eyes, said the Lord. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is a reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Again, friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children. Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So here in our third Sunday of Advent, I'm sure you've heard already about how Advent is the season of waiting and watching for the coming of Christ which is what makes it perhaps one of the most challenging seasons in our church year. Perhaps because in waiting and in watching, especially when what we're waiting for is salvation, we're reminded of our own powerlessness, of our own inability to save ourselves. One of the fundamental elements of our existence is that action of putting our hands to our lives and attempting to organize it in some suitable manner. We make choices and have agency. In many ways, we determine the course of our own lives by the actions we take or don't take. So waiting, then, feels somewhat counterintuitive. What will happen, we might ask, if I just wait and watch? In the gospel text for today, John the baptizer is addressing this reality of how we organize our lives both individually 
and collectively, while simultaneously giving us one of the most important elements of the Advent season, that is a renewed vision of the horizon of our lives. To begin with, John addresses the crowd with some very strong language. You brood of vipers, he says. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? John's words are jarring here, especially when we consider the text from last week. He is, after all, John the baptizer. He specifically came to preach in this region, to preach repentance and forgiveness of sins. So why the hostility? To understand John's disposition, we can first turn to the text and notice how the crowd is coming to John to be baptized by him. John is out in the wilderness, away from the city. In short, John is not where the well-to-do of society are concentrated. This is in keeping with the prophecy from Isaiah, which Luke's gospel tells us was fulfilled in some manner, and the life of John the baptizer the prophet of God proclaiming the coming salvation out in the wilderness, where God once led the Israelites to the promised land. Not in the city, a symbol of humankind's ability to organize existence into a well-ordered life. Nevertheless, the people come to John, and his harsh greeting mentions the wrath to come, which is a curious point when the proclamation of, of this voice in the wilderness is about salvation. It brings to mind the question, can wrath and salvation be brought together? Assuming they'll use their cultural heritage as a buffer against John's proclamation and express confidence in their own organization of their lives, strong enough to withstand judgment and wrath, John gives this metaphor of the axe being laid to the root of every tree that does not bear good fruit. The very root of the tree, nothing of that organization of life will remain. We're talking total annihilation. So the crowd asks, what then should we do? And through a series of commands, John essentially says, reorganize your lives. John is saying to the crowd, look, You've built these cities. You've organized your collective existence in this particular way, but it's not right. There's some who have two coats and others who have none. Some who have plenty of food and others who have none. You need to reorganize. But what is to guide this reorganization? The crowd there believes that John is perhaps the coming Messiah. John points them away from himself and instead directs them to God. This is the essential Advent theme that must accompany all our waiting and our watching. That is a re-envisioning of the horizon of our hope. The crowd begins to place hope in John the baptizer, who then confronts them with an image of Christ, standing with a winnowing fork in his hand. It is an imaging of disaster, not quite the depiction of Christ we prefer to hold in our minds when we sit in the anticipation of Advent. But let's look again at the reading from Zephaniah quick. I will remove disaster, says the Lord, from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. This is the horizon of hope we have in the Advent season, because in this season we must face the truth of our existence, that we put our hands to organize our lives just so, but things fall apart. We fail to include everyone. We fail to acknowledge the truth of the other. We fail to be just, and we fail to adequately consider the suffering of others. But notice the last few words of our gospel reading. John proclaimed the good news to the people. It's a challenge to understand the metaphors of trees being cut down and thrown to the fire and Christ standing with a winnowing fork ready to separate wheat from chaff as good news. But the Gospel of Luke understands the cycle of self-annihilation humankind perpetuates. This process of relying on our own organization of this life 
will always fall apart when seen in the light of the righteousness of God. Therefore, Christ with the winnowing fork is good news. By the Spirit, we are freed from this self-annihilation of being oppressed and oppressing others as we continue through this long journey of Advent. Remember, it is the reality of our existence that no matter how securely we believe our lives are organized, things do fall apart. And yet Christ is the horizon of our hope. Christ is liberation. Christ is truth. Christ is new life coming again and again. So wait and watch, acknowledging how things will fall apart, how we fail, yet hopeful of Christ who comes to set all things right again. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 249, On Jordan's Bank, the Baptists Cry. Let's sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people in places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us, that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and with the planet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoice in God. You exult over us in singing. Enliven the song of this assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians. With instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for your servants who showed us your goodness and grace. By the power of your spirit, keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the, pro with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. In ancient times, God also led the Israelites through the desert with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The priests of old also kept a perpetual fire burning in the temple to remind us that God is a light who cannot be extinguished. Finally, Jesus, the Word, who was with God since the beginning of creation, became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory shining in our world full of grace and truth. Christ's light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. This is the same light that has commanded us not to hide our light under a bushel basket, but to put it on a lampstand so that everyone may see it. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With our, life, with our lights burning brightly, we now join the saints and the angels in the hymn of praise to God, the everlasting light. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, our bright morning star, we give you thanks that you have fed us well through the bread and wine of your supper. May it enable us to shine brightly in all the dark places of our world with your love, your justice, and your peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. And now, people of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 248, People Look East. Thanks be to God.